I'm gonna buy this one. I'm gonna buy this one. Buy this one. Confirm. Boom. Got back into my portal. I should see my NFT that I just purchased. It's this one. Now that I bought that one, I want to flip the price. I want to sell for seven. Relist for sale. Release for sale. Pay the listing fee. Boom. Got the NFT listed for seven now. I'm gonna change my wallet. Wallet number two. Buy that one for seven. Pay and I got the NFT. In this video, we need to finalize interaction with the resale smart contract, meaning that I need to list an NFT for sale and I should be able to see that NFT listed in the front page. We have to work with the front page. We have to build the front page. We have to add all the HTML code and the function that is going to talk to the resale smart contract and pull the data from all the NFTs that I am selling or I have listed in the marketplace. Because we know those NFTs are stored in the resale smart contract. Anytime someone lists an NFT for sale, that NFT will be transferred from the holder's wallet or the owner wallet onto the resale smart contract. So now we can query the resale smart contract and grab that information so then we can list the NFTs in the front page. And we will list those NFTs. We will add the price to each one by calling the smart contract and obtaining the price value from the vault object. Okay. As you remember on the previous video, we talked about the vault object, which is the name, the image, the title, the description, and the price. Okay. So now we use the same value to send the call back to the resale smart contract in case a user decides to buy an NFT. They click the buy button. The price is already stored in the buy button, kind of stored on it. It sends that information to the smart contract with the right value or the right price or the purchase price. Okay. We are also working with the front end because we need to display that and we're done with that piece. And then we can move on into the following video. The following video, we will enable multi-chain capability. We will add a drop down menu button. Users will click that button and they can choose which blockchain they want to interact with. Okay. So we need to build that. And we also have to work with the MetaMask API because we want to do some magic. I don't want to manually change the wallet into Polygon if it's on another blockchain, right? If I connect onto the application and I have NFTs listed in Polygon or I have NFTs store on Polygon, I will add a button for Polygon. So once you click Polygon, it will send the request to auto switch the networks in MetaMask so then we can pull the information. We want to make this as simple as possible for the end user, which means that we have to code a little bit more but the idea is for massive adoption. We want to make this as simple as possible, which means that we, us, the developers, we got to work a lot in coding, but hey, as long as it's successful, it doesn't matter what it takes and how much effort it does take because we want to be successful, okay? Alrighty, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump onto Virtual Studio Code we will work a little bit in the graphical interface because we have to fix the information that was not displaying correctly. You know, we saw stuff in white, stuff in black. So we're going to fix that. We will also list an NFT for sale. I already got some NFTs on a couple of wallets. So we are going to list those NFTs for sale and we will do a test purchase. The end goal is to show those NFTs in the homepage or in the front. So anyone that visits the website, the marketplace, they should see those NFTs listed right in front of their eyes, ready to be purchased. So then the buyer, the only thing he has to do is click the buy button. It opens the wallet, ask for the transfer and done. They got the NFT. That's the goal. Okay. So let's go ahead. 
let's finish this one. Let's complete this stage for the resell smart contract. And let's move into the next video working with the create NFT smart contract, which is completely different from because in this case, the end user will create an NFT from scratch. There's no particular collection. Anyone can go onto the marketplace and upload their PNG file, set their price, set the information, and boom, they have successfully listed an NFT for sale. I updated the resale smart contract in GitHub with the function to cancel a listing. Let's say a seller listed an NFT for sale, they regret and they want to cancel that listing, they can do so. They'll click the button to cancel the listing and the NFT should be returned to the seller or the owner, okay? And absolutely, it's a must. It's a must to have that function, okay? However, if the seller listed an NFT for sale and regret it and they canceled the listing, we still keep the listing fee because we provided the platform. If they change their mind, you know, that's the service, okay? That still remains the same. But to cancel the listing, we're not gonna charge anything. Let's go ahead, let's jump, let's fix a little bit of the graphical interface and let's list an NFT for sale, buy it, and we'll go from there. Alrighty, so we continue right when we left off. So let's go ahead and continue building this web front end because we need to make this happen. Okay, right where we left off. So first thing we are going to do, I have to take a look at the styling for this next site. And I mentioned on the previous video that we are using next UI. So there is a one thing that I forgot to add onto the app.js file, which is basically how we will render this application. This is where we render uh, the components, okay? So let me go ahead into the application. I'm gonna show you why. So I have a theme from Next UI. I literally followed their guide and built this theme color dark. And I got the font, I got the colors, and I got background, shadow, borders, etc. So this grabs the entire styling component of my web front end. But you can see right here, I haven't applied this to my application. Okay. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. Perfect. So I haven't I haven't attached this to the application. So I need this to be rendered. And we mentioned that under next UI provider, we got component. Component is the actual next site. Every single component renders here, okay? What I have to do, I have to add something at the end. This is from next UI. So I, what I have to call this in the next UI provider, because basically it's wrapping my site. So basically this opens next UI provider, closes next UI provider. I have to invoke theme and inside theme, I call the name of my team, which is the same theme. Okay. So let me go ahead and do that. And you are going to see the difference right away. Okay. So we'll control S let's take a look at now. Mm, way better. Okay. So now we know that the site it's using the next UI template or theme that we have defined for this application. Now I got my NFTs displayed properly. This is what we want. Okay. So let me go ahead and zoom out and you can see a little bit better. And now we have three NFTs. Okay. We got four NFTs actually for, from this wallet. So let me go ahead and change my wallet. So I'm going to swap into wallet number two and let's go ahead and refresh and see what NFTs do I have? There you go. Now I got three NFTs. So I know that I am able to switch from wallets and refresh the state of the NFTs. How do I do that? Let's go and find out. I'm going to open my site and I just got the picture. Remember, we are using my NFT pooler, which means that I am not calling a particular API to get the pictures. I am actually calling the blockchain and rendering straight from IPFS. So it's going to take a little bit of time. 
But again, it's going to work. Cool. Awesome. So let me go back onto the application. I want to show you something. So in order for me to show that, okay, so if we want to display the NFTs from a particular wallet, guess what? I have to first grab the wallet address and then I have to query the entire smart contract and find which wallet address is holding NFTs. So I will do an if condition. If this is the wallet, then show me the NFTs for that wallet. Okay. So in that case, what I have to do, I have to do the following. It's quite cool. So when I run my get wallet NFTs, this is literally the same thing as the NFT puller. If you haven't seen the NFT puller video. I am going to leave the link to the video in the description below. Okay. So we build the get wallet NFTs. Basically what I'm going to do, I am going to grab the entire supply, mint it on the NFT smart contract. And I want to get the information from the owner. So I want to grab the owner from those NFTs and I want to store that value value from owner. So I am calling the owner. Let me take a look where that is. Here we go. So we got owner contract owner of. So basically I am calling the NFT smart contract. I am calling the function owner of token. What's the token? The NFT ID. So give me each NFT ID. I want to know the owner. I'm going to store that in the owner constant. So with the owner constant, I can then grab this value and store the value after resolving the promise in this particular var. How do I know that I am getting the information that I want, or at least I am getting the owner wallet? So I left this and you can go ahead and remove it. The console.log will give me the value that I render every time that I go over each NFT. Okay. So let me show you go back here. I'm going to press F12 and let me go up. There you go. So I got object ID. Let's take a look at this one, which is kind of cool. So you can see this liner, literally, if we look on the far right, I don't know if you can see it because of my screen. So let me see if you can see. It. There we go. So 75 line 75 position 24. So if we go under here, here you go. Line 75, 24. So there's 24 spaces line 75. I know that this particular token is the information from the console log. So every time that I grab an NFT value, I am going to place that here. Let me go ahead and open the entire promise and look the values that we need. Here you go. The wallet. Guess what? The wallet is this particular value, which is owner W, which owner W is resolving the output that was stored when we initially make the call to find the owner of. OK, so after finding the owner of, I will grab the wallet address and store that in owner. I will then grab owner and resolve because the output of owner it's basically returning a promise okay so a promise it's an index of values there's it's very similar to an array but it's not an array it's an index of values in which i have different values or i can have multiple indexes of multiple values okay so this is basically what we're talking about this is an object promise okay so we got an object right here and inside that object, we got the name, image, token ID, and so forth. So you can see name, image, token ID, and so forth. Okay. Now that I know the owner wallet, I can go to HTML and I can map the output. So by the way, how do I get this information stored in NFTS? Let's go back up. So what I'm going to do, I am going to get the output from meta. So the metadata, I just abbreviated it into let meta. All this information, every time that you know about an NFT, that you read an NFT, then grab all this value and store this here. But then I need the entire call. So when you when you call every single NFT, the entire call for all the NFTs, all that information, I want to store that in an array. So I created an, an array called item array. So if we go up, there we go. So we created an empty array called item array, and I will use that array to push the information that I obtained from Meta. 
Once I get that information, I can grab that output item array and call it int the use state. So in the functional component use state, I can get the item array stored. Okay. And I can call that into the functional component. If we go up, I'm going to show you right now. I am use state, whatever you get from the array. There you go. So whatever we're getting from the array, I want to get that from set nfts and then i can now effectively use this final use state information that i got by grabbing the use state from the call okay so basically i call the entire function i get the item array after rendering every nft and getting all the information i store that inside the array i then go under the set nfts use state function or object and then i invoke the item array so then i can store that and add that into my use state value and then i can now effectively use this to build my html map so if i go down i got the nfts so if we go up nfts so every time that you get a call to this it's stored here and then i can use this value to display the information in html so i got now the following this is the, the fun part i will be querying every value right and then i will have a key i this is basically the index so the i it represents the index of each nft so every time that I got an NFT store, this is I. So let's say I dot wallet means every NFT, you know, NFT one wallet, NFT two wallet, NFT three wallet. Okay. So now I got that. I will be creating a var called owner. Owner is going to be equal to user. Okay. User, it's a value that I already define. I'm going to show you where that is defined right here so i got another use state which is get user after making this call so i am expecting the user to connect their wallet i need to obtain that wallet address i will be just doing a web3 call instead of doing ethers i'm just using web3 just to grab the wallet address and store that and then get that output stored in use state so that i can use the value of user down in html because now i got the connected wallet i got the value there and i'm going to create a bar called owner owner equals user user is the wallet that's connected if here we goes if owner meaning that whoever connected to the application if whoever connected the application if the wallet address that connected to the marketplace is equal to the wallet owner of that NFT that you just stored in the NFT map, then proceed to render. There you go. So now I need to match this if statement. I got to compare the owner of the token to the owner or the wallet that got connected into the marketplace. And that's how I can show the NFTs that that user holds. That's how I know which NFTs the user holds and I can display only those NFTs. There you go. I will also execute a real list. Basically what it's going to do is go going to compare if the price equals resale price. So I am looking, give me, if you have a price, then execute the real list NFT function. Okay. You see what I'm going. I build this release function inside the map because every time that you get a new NFT value that is matching the user that connected to the owner of the NFT, I want to provide the capability of relisting those NFTs for sale, meaning that I will be appending the owner wallet, the price of the NFT, and every information that I will be asking the end user so they can list the NFTs. I need to obtain that value from the user. The user has to input the amount. I am going to catch that amount right here. If price, then return, right? In this case, realist. He already typed the value. And when he typed the value, I am expecting that he indeed typed something of value in the 
placeholder, in this case, the NFT. So inside the NFT, I am expecting a price value there. If I don't have a price, I am not going to allow the user to relist. Why? Because I have a catch error, meaning that you need to tell me what the price is or else you cannot relist. I need you to provide me the value, okay? And then we will proceed to relist, which basically what it's going to do is going to you obviously is going to query the wallet of the user, find the price, and the price is basically the resale price. This is the number that that end user posted on the site, right? So we're grabbing that price and we will then open Ether's utils because we have to convert that value onto Ether. Okay, so then we can send the amount in decimal to the smart contract. So then when the NFT gets listed for sale, it has the price in the right format. Okay, now we are going to obviously set an approval for all because I am effectively moving my NFT to another smart contract. So I got to first tell the NFT collection smart contract hey, I'm giving you approval for this smart contract to move the NFTs, okay? Because I am approving it. And that's how you are allowed to move it. Now I am calling the contract and then I am going to call the resale smart contract and I am calling the resale AVI, which obviously is mandatory. And signer, signer, it's me, my wallet. So I will be telling in this particular value of contract all this information. So I'm basically nesting all that information onto one single value. And then I can use that value to make calls. So now I can call the contract, which is basically using my wallet. And then it's going to yeah, find the ABI. So then the, the function it's there. And then it's going to query the correct smart contract address. Okay. So with that said, we need to get the listing fee because we need to charge the seller the listing fee and that's how we get it we first query the resale smart contract give me the listing fee we will store a listing fee and we will convert that value to string then what we are going to do we are going to send the request to list the nft that he selected for sale you know for so listing to, for sale we will grab the token ID because remember the I includes the token ID. So every time that the map cached an NFT, each time it will make one button for one token, one token, one token, one token. So token one, token two, token three, token four. Okay. So let me, let me open it. I think it's going to make more sense once I explain to you this way. NFT that map made this every time that you got a NFT map call or at least render it's going to find that user wallet, okay? So it's gonna find for that value and then it's going to render everything. So this was I, you know, the first uh, first time that it read, it grabbed this. The second time it read, you know, went again and read every single line, render this, and then third time. Why only three and not the entitled total supply? Because it has to match. The owner of this token has to match the wallet that is connected to the marketplace. That is the only way that we can make this happen by calling the smart contract, the NFT smart contract, obtaining the value for the wallet owner, the owner wallet, and then comparing that value to my wallet connected. And that's how I know that those are their NFTs. Okay. And for each NFT, when I set a price, guess what? I will be sending that information to the resale function. So if we go back, I'm going to show you right now, we are sending the information to the relist NFT. So when we click release NFT, we are providing the price, which we type that number, resale price. And how do I put this information in HTML so people can put their price? It's right here. So you're going to see input right here. This is the value in HTML. You can check, you can check the code. I will be as always providing the code so you can practice and on change, we will have update resale price, resale price, price, E target value. How do I come up with this resale price, price value? So every time that I got the call matching, because I am matching the owner of the NFT, I will be grabbing price into resale price. And then I can use this particular 
on change and we will discuss this in detail in the next video when we build the create nft because we're going to be using this a lot okay but this is basically how can i input something and call it up in the function okay so i am putting a value and then calling it up into the function okay so don't worry and finally i will execute realist which basically what it's doing is calling the upper function which calls everything else okay after i got the price value and all that i can effectively hit that button and it's going to have everything it needs to process the listing okay so let's go ahead and continue now what i'm going to do now that you know that i am going to build the front page okay we have to build a front page because what i want to do i want to list one nft for sale we will see the nft populated on the marketplace front page and then we will buy it okay let's go we know there's nothing here let's fix that so let me go ahead under the app i'm going to navigate to index and you can see this is pretty much you know nothing here it's like nothing it's there one thing that i want to install i want to install two animations on the site so i want to display first of all i want to display some sort of uh you know carousel that shows each nft like a feature nft like a bigger picture file in the marketplace and you're going to see it so for that i'm going to install two libraries go to my application i'm going to stop the server the first library I'm going to install, this is basically a styling library. You're going to see it. I'm not going to go too much into details. It's called React Multi Carousel. Okay, so it's installed. And now let me install Canvas Confetti. Oh, you're going to love this. Canvas Confetti is awesome. Like when you press the, the you press any button, it will throw confetti. Like it shows like a some sort of confetti display. It's, it's kind of cool. Just give it a little touch, a little bit of touch. Okay. Okay, so let me now restart the server. Cool. Awesome. All right. Now let's build that index. I'm going to go a little bit quick. Again, I do not spend too much time in the HTML side of things, but I am going to explain everything that is relevant to the marketplace my contract. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to install all the imports that I need and we will go and show you what this is about. Obviously, Ethers, because we're interacting with the smart contract, we are definitely using use state and use effect. Axios, because we need to do the parsing in the function as we were doing in the portal. Same thing. The Web3 model to do the calls, and we are importing the ABIs for sure, because we need to interact with the smart contracts. And we are importing all the GUI objects, the address of those smart contracts, as well as my RPC address to make the calls. And I will be importing my private key, but this is encrypted and the styling to make the site happen. Okay. To, to properly render it with the style we want. And now let me start pasting. I'm going to begin the function. This function is going to be called the home function. So I am basically building the default function home. And then we are building a set state state of a resell NFTs because I will be storing the value when I make the call to the smart contract to obtain the NFTs that were listed for sale. And this is how I'm going to grab the value and I will do a map very similar to the NFTs map. OK, it's going to be very similar and I will be invoking the confetti because I want that effect. So when people hit that button to buy, it's going to throw that confetti, which is kind of cool. OK, and every time that a new NFT has been listed for sale, if this value updates, it means that you need to reload. So I am telling Next.js to auto reload the call. So then we get the new values once again. OK. And it's going to be a very similar function. OK. In this case, we are calling load hard hat resell. This is the name that I've the function that I that I created. But what we want to focus on. And by the way, I am calling two smart contracts. I am calling the token smart contract which is the NFT smart contract. And I am also calling the market contract, which is the resale smart contract. OK, because we need to call both. If we listed an NFT for sale, it's going to be the market smart contract. We transfer that NFT to the marketplace smart contract. So now the address of the owner will be the marketplace. And guess what? When we do the render the map to display the NFTs, we will use the market smart contract 
to make sure that we only show those NFTs because effectively those NFTs are for sale. If the owner shows the marketplace smart contract, it means that those NFTs are for sale. Okay, you know, the same thing. This is literally the NFT puller. I am grabbing the URI and then calling it so then I can display the pictures and so forth. And then I'm creating a very similar object as meta. In this case, it's called item. I'm you know calling the price, calling the token ID, calling the image everything i'm grabbing all that value and storing that in an array and then difference in this from the portal i am creating a sleep call meaning that hey i want the site to stop rendering and i wait until the entire call finishes and i get all the information before you proceed and read it and, and display it because if i do not tell the site to sleep a little bit it might error out because it might render before I got all the values and that we don't want that. We want to at least tell the site to stop. And then once you get all the information, then you store it here. So I'm basically just telling, hey, see, three seconds, hold on for three seconds and then store everything. So we know we got everything beforehand and we are not going to run into any errors. OK, now what I'm going to do, this is an next UI thing, a formatter. So like if the application has been open from the desktop, this is, you know, this is the whole width you know, the sizing and so forth. I'm not going to go too much into to it. If you want to learn more about it, next UI, go there and read all about styling for Next.js, which is awesome. OK, so now let's build the entire HTML code and we will go explain this one by one. So let me go from the top. OK, first thing I'm going to do, this is more visual it's not even a blockchain per se or it's not even a call to the blockchain so i'm just going to go very uh, briefly if you want to learn how to set up the carousel you're going to see how th that looks it's kind of cool basically this is all the information and you just go under the react multi-carousel search for that do a google search grab that information and you should get the how to basically basically this is how to call it this is all the information that i got to provide and so forth and this is the styling you're, you're gonna see it okay let's go where we definitely want to pay attention okay the hh list this is the same thing as we did with the nfts but in this case this is hh list which basically is the result after getting the information from this call which is stored in the use state for HA resell NFTs. You know, the array that we created, that we store all that value, we store it here, we send that to the use state, we go up and resell NFTs is calling use state. And this is HH list, which basically what I'm going to do, I am going to pass this value along here and then I can go down into HTML and do my call. Every time that I get a value that it's equal to the market smart contract address guess what's going to happen it's going to continue and render everything everything here okay and check this out h list okay so i got h map then start rendering everything so basically what i'm going to do here by the way this is for the carousel because we want to call the smart contract get only the image because I only want to get the image so we can build that carousel and the carousel can show all the NFTs display. You're going to see that now. OK, finally, we will build another map. OK, but in this case, this is for me to separate objects. OK, so I can start with a particular index. And if you hover over it, you can learn more about it. Basically, it starts with a particular index. In this case, what I'm doing I am starting from zero to nine. Basically, that's the index. Like that's how you're going to start listing the values from each index. Each index is basically one NFT. That's how we list them for sale. OK, and that's how we display them because it's going to go from zero to nine and stop. OK, and we will create this function, which is buy list NFT. What it does we will call the Web3 connection. It's going to call the wallet. It's going to connect. It's going to grab the signer, basically my wallet address, and it's going to let me buy the NFT because now it, the call has the user wallet. I got the wallet address. Now I can send the wallet, the message sender to the smart contract. And if the user buys the NFT, we are going to provide the value of that NFT 
and the token ID. So then we know which NFT we are buying. Okay. We will definitely build each NFT box. So every time that the application renders, we will display each NFT. This is how we call the map. You know, we'll go one by one with that eye, you know, index one, index two, index three, index four, index five. As long as they all match the marketplace address as the owner, I am going to list that on the front page, meaning that those NFTs are for sale. Okay. And sure enough, I build a card. It's, a, it's just a card object, and this is all the values. I will be displaying the name of the NFT, the token ID, and the image. And this is how we create that. Feel free to give this a shot, test it out, change it out. Be curious, because that's how you learn, okay? And at the end, what we need to do, if the user wants to buy the NFT, we are going to call the buy list NFT, but we are going to pass the value of the NFT, okay? But guess what we're going to do? We're going to also display the confetti because every time that someone presses that button, we want to show that effect. And you're going to see that now. It's kind of cool. Hit that buy button. I will be calling effectively this function right here. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I am going to, first of all, because it's a big, big config, I want to first stop the server. Okay. So we're going to control S, control C. We're going to save that. Control S, I just save uh, the file and we're going to go back and we're going to run dev. Let's see how that goes. Moment of through, let's hit the marketplace and see how that goes. We're getting there. Top collections, latest NFTs. Let's see that on HTML where that is configured. I am pretty sure this is the carousel section. Okay, so let me go back. Top collections, you can see it right here. Okay, so what's going to happen under top collections, I am going to display the pictures from the, the of the NFTs that we're listing for sale. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to go back to my portal. I'm going to wait until I get my NFTs. Let me select token three. Okay. I'm going to list that for three Ethereum. We are going to release for sale and hopefully we get the prompt. And sure enough. Awesome. So we're getting the prompt. Let's scroll down and we're going to confirm. Now we are getting the listing fee. So we are now getting the prompt for the listing fee. We're going to go and confirm. The first prompt was to set approval for all. So then the marketplace can move the NFT. So let's confirm. Wait. And for some reason, it's not connecting to my network, which means that probably I have an issue with the RPC. Yeah, it's the an RPC issue. Let me go back to the code. Probably I'm missing something. And my var for the network, it's uh, mainnet. So I'm gonna call mainnet. So let me go back and make sure that is. Ah, yep, it's not. This is an error, HHRPC. It's not, it's mainnet. That is the value that is being exported, okay? There you go, something to learn. Mainnet, it's the value that is going to talk to my provider. So mainnet is the value that should be talking to my provider. Okay. So what I want to do, this is the issue. I got mainnet, but then index has HHRPC. So let me change this with mainnet. I want to import mainnet. I'm going to call it in the JSON RPC provider mainnet. I want to control S. Let's take a look at now. Oh my God. Awesome. There you go. There you go. Awesome. 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 You saw it. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this carousel right now because I only have one NFT. It's not showing more pictures, but I should be able to see them auto scrolling, which is kind of fun. Uh, so if I go back, I want to show you the code again. This is very cool. So I got auto play speed. So every six seconds, it's just going to rotate, rotate and rotate. So what I'm going to do, I am going to list another NFT for sale. Let me go ahead and do that. So now I am going to list token four. Let's let's talk token four and let's sell this one for two to Ethereum. I'm going to relist for sale. First call is to set approval for all. Second call is to pay the listing fee. Confirm and crossing fingers. <gasps> Woo now I should see. There we go. Awesome. 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 So now I see two pictures. I got NFT one, NFT two. And there you go. They're going to be auto moving, auto 
rotating, which is kind of fun. It's kind of awesome. I think I got to fix a little bit the layout. Um, but yeah, it looks it's awesome. And now I got the two NFTs, latest NFTs listed for sale. Now let's take a look and see if we can get the confetti when we hit the buy button. It's kind of cool. There we go. Awesome. And we got the prompt to buy the NFT and the price of two Ethereum. In this case, two of the native token, the token that we are allowing to purchase the NFT with. Okay, so let me go ahead and buy it. We bought it and now we automatically get switched to our portal. So with our portal, we can see the assets that we're holding in the wallet, the NFTs that we just bought, anything that I want to free list for sale, etc. So every time that I buy something, I am going to get redirected onto the NFT portal. If I list something for sale, I will be redirected into the marketplace homepage to see the NFT that I listed. How did I do that? I used something called router, the use router, which basically what I need to do is tell the ASIC function right at the end, once we get confirmation, to redirect me to a particular page. Let me show you the configuration. Very simple. Let's go back. Let me show you. So we are at the index. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here. Awesome. So we first have to import use router from next router from next JS router function. We import use router. We have to then create a constant called router. And what I'm going to do right, right at the end of the function to buy the NFTs from the list from the market, I am going to invoke router dot push and where I want to get redirected. Same goes with the portal. If I list an NFT for sale at the end of the ASIC function, I am going to have router push and just forward slash because it's going to send me to the index or the main page. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and let's go down onto there we go. So this is the function to relist the NFT and we will have router push and the forward slash forward slash wheel will redirect me to the home page. So let's try again. It's kind of awesome to see this working. So let me go ahead. What I'm going to do, I am in this particular wallet and I am going to switch to another wallet. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to use this particular wallet. And what I'm going to do now, I am going to refresh. So I'm going to refresh and those are the NFTs that are on my wallet because on the ASIC function to get the NFTs is going to compare what NFTs are matching the wallet that just connected into the application, which is kind of awesome. I am only going to see my NFTs and that's it. Okay. So now I am going to list token number seven for sale. I am going to set a price of five tokens. I'm going to confirm. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to pay the listing fee. We're going to confirm. And now I got redirected into the main page. Once we render all the metadata, sure enough, we now get that NFT ready to be purchased. I'm going to switch to a different wallet. I'm going to switch to a different wallet and we will buy that NFT. I am going to switch to wallet number one. I'm going to buy. There we go. Now we got the prompt to buy the NFT. It's five tokens. I am going to confirm. Now I got redirected into my NFT portal with the newly purchased NFT. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. One last thing that I want to do. I am going to add the footer. The footer is basically something at the end that shows like the marketplace information and, and you can put logos, you can put links to other sites social media, etc. It's very straightforward. Okay. So I already got one ready to go. Okay. So what we're going to do, we are going to create a new file under pages. And uh, let me call this footer JS. And I am just going to paste this. This is kind of cool. So I am invoking the font. So the font that we all been using in the series as a font, I am going to invoke text row, spacer, container, and column from next UI. So this is the library that I'm using for front end styling. Okay. And this is 
an array that I'm building so that I can call multiple values when I render the footer because I will be calling in a similar fashion the map to list every single item in the footer. So in this case, you can see footer one map. This is the footer map one, and those are the informations that I'm going to provide. If you want to know what it's being tied to this, so let me take a look at footer one. So you can see footer one that I will be doing a map. The first thing is ID number one, image. This is the image for ID one and the URL. So every time that it goes over an ID, it's just going to add the logo and it's going to add or append the URL so it's clickable, so we can click on it, okay? So you can see it right here, item URL. So item will be the item that I am rendering and the URL will be the reference, the H reference. So that's a hyperlink reference. When we click that, it should redirect me to the URL that is here, okay? And then I will have the image, which is basically the logo and so forth. So let me go ahead and apply this to be rendered. How do I apply this to be rendered across all my pages? I don't need to invoke this on every single page. The only place that I have to invoke is in the app.js file. So what I want to do now, I am going to, first of all, I'm going to make sure that I'm exporting the function. So now I need to import that function in the app. Okay, so we're going to go to the app. Okay, so now all I have to do is import the footer into the app.js file. I'm going to import, I'm going to type footer from the file itself, which in this case is going to be forward slash footer. There we go. Awesome. And now after next UI provider. Okay, so now all we have to do is call the footer. So we are going to type footer and inside this footer section, because this is also the footer in the web app. So I am telling app.js, hey, this is my footer section. I'm going to render something else as the footer, but that will be shown across all my pages. Okay, so this is how I define it but then I have to open the actual footer, right? And render it inside this division. But this is the footer division, and this is the actual footer that is being called here. So if you go up, this is where I named that import footer, right? It's kind of confusing, but actually it's just the division for the footer and inside the actual footer, okay? So I'm gonna press Control S. Let's take a look at that. There we go. You got the footer down here and now I am on 100% zoom. So now everything has been rendered correctly, okay? So here's the thing. Now what we need to do, we have to go onto the portal and now I got my NFTs rendered. Now let me go ahead and test a couple of buy and sells and we're done. We're done with this video, okay? Let's go ahead. So I'm gonna type three. I'm gonna sell this one for three and I'm gonna press confirm. I'm gonna pay the listing fee. Boom, we got another one. Let's wait for that to be rendered. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now let me go back onto the white portal. I am going to change my wallet. I'm gonna choose another wallet and we'll do the same. Put the six, release for sale. Now I'm going to set approval. And now, oh, one thing. What just happened here and it's not working, it's because I haven't refreshed the wallet. This is not a normal behavior. No one will use multiple wallets to you know, sell from the same page. So I ended up adding the button that will allow you to refresh the state of the marketplace. So now I got the NFTs that I'm actually holding in this wallet, okay? So now let me put the price, six, the list. I'm gonna set the approval for all. And now I am definitely getting the listing fee charge, which I'm going to confirm. Boom, now we got the NFT listed for sale. I'm gonna buy it out with a different wallet. Wallet number three, I'm gonna buy this one. Beautiful, beautiful, six, confirm. Boom, got directed back onto my portal and I got my NFT. I wanna sell that NFT now that I just bought it. I'm gonna flip the price, 10, relist for sale, confirm. Pay the listing fee, boom, there you go. Now it's for 10, okay? Now, let me change my wallet. I'm gonna choose a different wallet. This is the fun part, right? I'm gonna choose a different wallet. I'm gonna buy this one, I'm gonna buy this one. Buy this one, confirm, boom, got back into my portal. I should see my NFT that I just purchased, it's this one. 
Now that I bought that one, I want to flip the price. I want to sell it for three. You know what? I'm going to sell it for seven. Relist for sale. Release for sale. Pay the listing fee. Boom. Got the NFT listed for seven now. I'm going to change my wallet. Wallet number two. Buy that one for seven. Pay. And I got the NFT. You and I, we are going up. Okay. In the next video, we are going to build the Create Marketplace NFT smart contract. That will be a fun one. Okay. We will also build the multi chain capability onto the marketplace. We will add the button that allows users to switch blockchains and we will interact with the MetaMask API. So then we can get some auto information. We can get some information from the wallet that connects to the marketplace and hey, display NFTs that they have in the network they're connected, okay? So we can do that. It's quite, quite awesome. Also, we will give the opportunity or we will help the end user. Let's say an end user wants to buy something on Polygon, but they don't have the Polygon network and the MetaMask wallet. The moment they click the Polygon icon in the drop down, they will have the opportunity to auto add Polygon onto the MetaMask wallet. So we will code that as well. Okay. All right. So that's it for this video. I hope you like what we're doing because there's a lot of cool stuff here. Don't forget, if you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to, and we'll see you on the next video.